Father God, we thank you, Lord, for once again, Lord, to bless us with a beautiful weekend, Lord, and, and for allowing us, Father, to get out here and just to, to have the freedom to worship you, to lift up your name in song and in word. And Father, we just present these prayer requests. Lord, there's a lot that's on our hearts that we just don't feel comfortable sharing about sometimes. But Father, you know, you know them intimately, Lord. You love us unconditionally, incomprehensibly. You know us so much better than we know ourselves. We're just asking you, Father, to reach into each of these needs. Some of them might be um, family issues. Some of them may be health issues. Some might be a financial issue or whatever, Father. The name of Jesus is above every name, and we're just lifting him up this morning and thanking you, Father, that we can come to you. I pray, God, that this morning you will open your word to us. Lord, help me not to preach, but let you preach through me, Lord. I just pray for that that stirring in our hearts, Lord, that we will receive this seed and it will carry it forth and it will sprout and grow and, and bring forth. We just pray these things in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, Miss Laurel. I wondered so ain't that life filled with sin I wouldn't let my dear Savior in Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night and praise the Lord, I saw the light, I saw the light, I saw the light, no more in darkness, no more in night, now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside, and praise the Lord, I saw the light, I was a fool to wander and stray, for straight is the gate and narrow is the way. Now I have traded the wrong for the right. And praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. And praise the Lord. Lord, I saw the light. Appreciate that. Anybody else here seen the light besides Miss Laurel? Amen. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Well, last week we were looking at verses 1 through 11 from Colossians 3. And you know, you might look at that and thought, well, hey, that's kind of the negative side of this chapter. Um, it was focusing on what? Putting things off. Putting off the negative things that we've accumulated. And uh, this morning we're going to look at verses uh, 12 through 17. And we're going to take a look at putting on some of the positive things. As a quick reminder, you know, Paul was, was writing to the church at Colossae. And he was warning against heresies. Basically things that... They weren't known as the Gnostics yet. That would come about 150 years later. They would hang a tag on them, but that referred to a lot of folks that thought there was higher knowledge, Jesus plus higher knowledge, Jesus plus mystic type religion. Paul was warning against that. He's, he's warning against the, the infiltration of outside things that said Jesus was a, a good man, but he wasn't of God. And if we believe the Bible, that's not what the Bible says. Jesus is the one and only true Son of God. Um, these folks were very legalistic, very prideful, and uh, we're going to read verses 12 through 17. And I'm going to, like I said, go from what we might consider the putting off the negative. We're going to look at putting on some stuff. Verse 11, oh, excuse me, 12 through 17. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which you also were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts of the Lord. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Father God, again, you bless us with your word, and we just pray that you will just 
You'll use this, Lord, to, to implant into our hearts those things that we should carry from here this morning. In Christ's name, amen. I want to look at this like we did last week. Just take it verse by verse. We don't have a whole lot of time, and I'm sure like normal, I'll skip over some of my notes. But um, Looking at verse 12, it says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meeks, meekness, and long-suffering. And that first part where it says the elect of God, have you thought about that? You know, when I read that scripture, I'll be honest with you, I kind of skipped over that first few, therefore is the elect of God. When you stop and think, the Lord that created this entire universe chose you and me. When we come to Christ, it wasn't all on our own. We were drawn. We were, the Lord chose us like, a, like you would go into, weird analogy here, but it just popped up. Go into a, a dog pound and, and pick up one of the ugliest, little scrawniest, scruffiest little puppies. But something draws you to him. You know what I'm saying? You ever done that? I mean, you know, God, when he looked at me, buddy, I was the ugly puppy. I wasn't that, that bouncy, pretty puppy. I, there was a lot of junk going on. But God saw through that, and he chose me. So therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies. Um. You know, last week we put, talked about taking off dirty clothes, throwing them away. There's no, there's no way we can wash them. There's no way you can clean them up and stuff. You throw them away. All right? This week we're going to talk about putting on. And, and the, the, the thought here, the original word is a Hebrew word that relates to the internal organs of our bodies when we talk about putting on tender mercies. That's a, the heart of compassion. Um, when you think about the innermost part of your being, we call that the heart. That's the heart of our emotions. And when he's talking about putting on tender mercies, um, that, that's one of them, that, that's something that you can't fake. You can't fake that heart. Um, kindness. A kindness. Kindness is a goodness towards others. Think about a goodness towards others that you want more better for them than you do yourself. You've met people like that. You know, they've got that just deep down goodness in their heart. It sounds like Jesus, doesn't it? Um, what about humility? The definition is to esteem another better than ourselves. There again, Jesus' life and his teachings illustrate that perfectly. I think we're starting to get the, the message here that, that all these are, are aspects and are all things that we've seen reading about the life of Jesus. How about long-suffering? or patience. Where's Miss Laurel? <laughs> I told you we might hit on that. But no. And, and you know, when you say that word, a lot of us thinking, man, now he's fixing the metal. Well, once again, if I'm pointing one finger out, I got three pointing back to me. That's a tough one forever. Anybody here never suffers about, anybody here just never struggle with patience? I want to see, I, I want to I wanna take some notes. How do you do it, you know? Um, I shared a little bit last week about getting impatient with that guy driving that Lincoln trying to cut me off. Um, but you know, the, the word carries with it the idea of enduring injustice. Of uh, It's the opposite of that quick anger we talked about last week. And again, it sounds a lot like Jesus. And again, if we'll stop and, and, and think about it, some of us might be falling short. But um, how, do we, how do we make up those shortfalls? Get into this book. Here I said it again. Get into this book daily. Spend time in that thing. Um, get into the epistles of Paul. Look through the, the gospels. Just dig in deep. Get in that Old Testament. And uh, there again, we talked last week about our our walk with God. It's not instant. It's not an instant sanctification, y'all. At best, it's a progressive sanctification. You've heard the old saying, three steps forward and two steps back. Um, if your Christian life isn't like that, I'd like to know the secret. <laughs> because we're going to, you know, all through life, it's, I see Rusty over there smiling. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, it's just, there's, sometimes you take three steps forward and you're really just rocking and rolling for the Lord. And, and all of a sudden, old enemy gets in there and he'll knock you back a step or two. Uh, part of progressive sanctification, I've made a little note here, we're continually chipping off the things that don't look like Jesus and continually putting on the things that do. Look at verse 13, it says, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. 
If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Y'all, this is so serious. In Matthew 5, what did Jesus say? He said, if you're already at the altar, if you have already come to the altar and the Lord reminds you that you've got, somebody's got all against you, your brother is upset with you for whatever reason, it says to leave your gift, to get up, put action on this thing, go and reconcile yourself to your brother. That gets your heart right. We've got to be clear and clean before the Lord when we come to Him. And I'm going to ask you a question. Um, how do we forgive someone who's really done us wrong? It's hard. You're exactly right, sister. It's hard. Um, but then you stop and think. Well, let's answer a question with a question. How much has God forgiven you? How much has God forgiven me? Is it really hard for us to forgive someone who's wronged us when God has forgiven us for so much? And I'm just going to be straight up right here. That's tough, okay? But I look back, and maybe your sins and maybe your ugliness wasn't as bad as mine. But I promise you, God reached into the dirty, nasty, miry cesspool to pull me out. I mean, I just, so does that mean I can instantly forgive? I wish I could say it did. It's a process. It is a process. But when we stop and realize God's infinite love and the forgiveness that he showed upon each and every one of us, that should help us to open our hearts to forgiving the others. Because years ago, I, I heard something that really stuck with me. When I first heard it, I was in a real bad place as far as forgiving someone who'd been, who'd really done me horribly wrong. Um, I was raised by a stepdad who hated my guts, and truth of the matter is, I returned the favor. It was a very contentious relationship, and I won't go into all that stuff. But you know, this had been eating at me for decades. I've been a Christian, and I thought I'd forgiven him. But you know what? I heard a, a message one time in the in the. It says, forgiveness is to set a prisoner free and then to realize that the prisoner was me. Did you get that? Forgiveness is to set a prisoner free and then realize that the prisoner was me. All along, I was the one hauling all that junk. You know, had invisible shackles held me down. But uh, when I finally found it in my heart of hearts to really forgive him for all that he'd done, it's like, all of a sudden, that saying became so real in my life. I realized that, hey, that's real. I haven't found that in the scripture, but I believe, I believe it's based on scriptural um, background. Verses 14 and 15. But above, above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your heart, to which also you are called in one body, and be thankful. And you know, there's that action phrase one more time. Put on. What's it telling us to put on? To put on love. It says love is that what binds it all together, what, what binds it all together, I, I, I see. Um, all the virtues that Paul is encouraging us to develop are, are perfectly held together if we're doing it in love. What are those virtues? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, and long-suffering. If, uh, if we just try to fake those virtues without love, guess what? People realize that. You can't, you can't get away with it. You know, you may, you may fool yourself, but that's all you're fooling. It's got to be bound up in love. Um, and then the last part of that says, let the peace of God rule in your heart. And as Christians, we should live in peace. It says, let peace rule. Has anybody experienced that, that unconditional peace, that, that peace that the Bible says passes all understanding in the middle of a, of a struggle, have you ever felt that peace? You can't explain that, can you? It's just, well, because like the Bible says, it passes all of our human understanding. But that's how we should live with others. Whether it's believers, non-believers, we should live in peace with all of them. What's that mean? It means we gotta take that first step sometime. It means we've got to sometimes suck it up, draw back on that meekness, strength, without, you know, it's it's a strength that we have, but it's not an aggressive strength. It's just, hey, we just got to sometimes dig in and, and realize if this is going to happen, it's going to be up to me. Uh, the word rule comes from the world of athletics. Paul tells us to let Christ's peace rule as an umpire or as a referee in our hearts. 
Verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God the Father through Jesus Christ. I was talking to Kenny White yesterday. Y'all know Kenny? Um, and we weren't even talking, quote, unquote, religious things. We just, you know, I'll, I'll kind of stop in and just chit-chat. And he said, a guy, I mean, a, a lady saw him the other day, and they said, why are you always happy? And he kind of grinned, and he says, well, what do you mean? She says, every time I see you, you've got a smile on your face, and you're happy. And he said, he just pointed up the sky and said, the Lord woke me up this morning. He said, what, what? What else do I have? He said, I've got this day ahead of me. He said, Lord has blessed me with so much. Yo, if we carry that attitude with us, if we could just wake up every morning and, and just have that, that attitude that, um, and, and that means that it's dwelling in him. I, I, I really, I felt, you know, it was really a, a, neat, a neat thing to go along with this morning's message, just talking to him. And I didn't tell him that, you know, hey, you're kind of helping me preach my message tomorrow. But, you know, when we wake up, and that's automatically, that's automatically our, our deal. zippity doo -dah, you know, it's, it's going to be a great day. Um, anyhow, it says, doing all in the name of the Lord Jesus. What's that mean? It means bringing honor to Christ in every aspect and in every activity of our daily living. Y'all, as Christians, we represent who? The Lord of creation. The word Christian, the very first half of that word is Christ you know back in the um, in the you know the disciples days that was a, a, a slur they, they called them little Christ like that was something to be ashamed of y'all I'm I'm mighty mighty blessed to be called a Christian aren't you um, but we have got to bring honor to Christ in every aspect and in every activity of what we do every single day um, we represent him everywhere we go, and, and there's a question that it kind of brings up the question: What impression do people have of Jesus Christ when they see or talk with him? And I don't, I'm going to ask you to answer out loud, but just think about that. What impression, if they know that you're a Christian, and we don't wear a tag around our neck, but guess what? People know. If somebody would have seen me when that guy cut me off, I told y'all about it last week in the mockery. If somebody would have seen me, if I, they'd have been a fly on the wall, they'd say, well, that guy ain't representing Jesus Christ at this minute. I wasn't. You know what I'm saying? I lost it. I, I blew it. We all do, if we're going to be honest. But we learn from that. I'm not going to belabor that thing, but we learn from that. But how about if somebody was to see you after you lose a round? Or after you win a round? Whatever it is. Um, are we are we portraying Jesus Christ as little Christ? And next question is, what changes could we make in our life in order to honor Him, in order to do a little better next time? And I think this third chapter of Colossians really lays out a great blueprint. It's a great foundation for us to build on um, if we'll follow it and if we'll apply it. You know, we didn't have time to really go through the whole thing. I just encourage you to go back and, and read Read last week's message, 1 through 11, and read this week's 12 through 17. And, and let's just see if we can't be a little more Christ-like as we walk through this earth. As we look on our that that walk of sanct a progressive sanctification, of growing closer to God, instead of three steps forward and two steps back, let's make it four steps forward and maybe just a half back and catch it. You know what I'm saying? Can't we get a little closer to the prize that way? I'd just like to encourage us to do that. Um, also, I'd like to, uh, I don't like to end a, a church service without giving an opportunity for someone, if there's somebody here that doesn't know the Lord. Um, and maybe we're all here. Maybe every one of us here knows Christ. And if so, that's great. But maybe there's somebody here that doesn't. And if that's you this morning, I'm going to give an opportunity. We're going to have a just a, 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 a sinner's prayer, for lack of a better word. We're just going to have a, a prayer of repentance. And if you haven't accepted Christ as your Savior, and you're tired of fighting it on your own, you're tired of uh, just beating your head against the wall, you wonder why things aren't happening in your life like, like you would think they would, I'm going to give you an opportunity this morning. We're going to have that opportunity to just 
invite him into our hearts. Is that okay? I'm going to do something a little differently this morning, too. Uh, it's, we used to do this quite often. I'm going to ask you to pray out loud. Some folks might feel uncomfortable um, accepting the Lord. The guy beside you, the girl beside you, might just feel a little out of way, but if they hear you praying it, it might just encourage them to pray. Y'all, we all remember that when we first become a Christian. It was a little bit nervous, wasn't it? But if that's okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Just, let's go ahead and, 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 and you know, before we even do that, I, I feel I've got time to share this too. If you're not a Christian, it is as simple as ABC. I, my, my dad, and I've told y'all many times, I witnessed my dad for 30 years before he accepted Christ. And I kept explaining to him, it's not easy. It's not always an easy walk. But it's as simple, accepting him is as simple as admitting, believing, and confessing. That sounds too simple, doesn't it? We got, you know, Romans 3.23 says, For all are sinners and come short of the glory of God. And he was part of all. I'm part of all. You know, we are. Believe in your heart that Christ died for your sins. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever, there again, I'm an all, I'm, an, I'm a whosoever, whosoever believes in them shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. Don't say might. It says shall have. We believe in him. And then three is confess your sins to the Lord. I don't need to know what you've done. The Lord don't need to know. He already knows. He needs you to know that he knows. Confess your sins to the Lord and ask him for his forgiveness. First John 1 John 1.9 says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to purify us from all unrighteousness. All those dirty, filthy rags are gone in just a twinkling of an eye. Let's all bow our heads. And if you will, like I said, please repeat after me. And, and, and guys, if this is your prayer, I want you to ponder each line, and if it's your prayer, not just with your mouth, pray it with your heart. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, without a doubt, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I need your forgiveness. I believe that only you can forgive my sins. I ask you to come into my heart to forgive me of my sins and to be the ruler of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Folks, I'm just going to tell you, if you prayed that prayer in your heart, not just with the mouth, we can do a lot with our mouth. We can fool people. You prayed that prayer in your heart, you're a brand new creation. How awesome is that? Is there anybody here that's done that for the first time? If you have, will you let us know? Well, once again, I'm just going to consider that each one of us are Christians. Let's go out. Let's see if we can't share a little bit about this message with somebody else today, maybe this coming week. And I, again, I encourage you, read, read, read this chapter over again and, and let the Lord bring back and, and he'll finish preaching what we just did and attempt at. How's that? Thank you again so much for coming. God bless you all. Thanks again.